My name is Teresa, and today I want to talk about what the term energy transition actually means. Specifically, I want to talk about how our energy systems will transition between now and 2050. The energy system is composed of four main parts, generation, transmission, distribution, and end use. Generation is where electricity comes from, and it will need to triple between now and 2050. Traditional sources of electricity provide very steady, stable power, day or night, winter or summer. Our systems have been built over time to accommodate this steady supply and distribute it to end users. By 2050, solar and wind will account for 50% of generation. These sources are cyclical. The amount of wind and sun changes from day to night and between each season. Fed into our current system, this would result in cyclical power for end users if we don't do something to smooth out the power supply. This power smoothing technology is being developed alongside wind and solar to make sure people still have power when wind doesn't blow and sun doesn't shine. Batteries are one option, but it's difficult to get enough batteries to store the amount of energy required. Hydrogen generation through electrolysis is another option, where the electricity is used to create hydrogen, which can be stored and burned later as a transport fuel or for heat. A special kind of gas-fired power plant called a gas peaking plant is kind of like a backup generator. It is turned off when the power provided by solar and wind is sufficient, and it's turned on and ramped up very quickly to provide more power to the grid when required. These options together provide a way to balance power from cyclical sources to provide steady supply to homes. With so much additional power required, it won't just be the new technologies that are needed. Traditional sources will be challenged to decarbonize, continuing to provide a portion of generation while using carbon capture and sequestration to reduce emissions. And other sources are continuing to be developed. The energy transition for generation means to change the mix of power sources and to grow the amount of energy being produced. Let's move to transmission and distribution now, together sometimes called the grid. The goal of the grid is to get power from the generation source to the end user. Generally, it's best to have generation close to end use and to make sure that the power doesn't get cut if maintenance is needed or something breaks at one generation source, sometimes local areas are connected through power lines. As electricity starts coming from different, sometimes cyclical sources, the transmission and distribution system needs to behave in a way to help balance the supply from the generators and the demand of end users. One way to do this is to connect generators to different end use locations at a big scale. If it's day in one spot, the solar energy can be harvested and supplied to another location where it might be dark. The more connected the grid is, the more likely that supply and demand can start to be balanced out. The other option is to have enough energy storage at each location so that generators can accumulate power when it's windy and sunny, put it in batteries or, or other storage options, and then supply it when needed to end users. This idea of each place having point source generation and storage is sometimes called a decentralized grid. In order to accommodate a different mix of energy generation with cyclical producers, the traditional steady options and emerging sources, the grid can help balance supply and demand by either being hugely connected or decentralized. Finally, what does energy transition mean for end users? Let's talk about where power is not yet traditionally used, the new markets that represent energy transition from fossil fuels to electricity. These are electrical heating for homes and businesses and electric vehicles. What's really interesting to me about electric vehicles is how they could be used to decentralize grids. What if your car charged during the day and was plugged into your house, providing power at night? These links between different elements of the electrical system are where revolutionary energy transition opportunities lie. The future of mobility is more than just electric vehicles. Shared mobility is expected to go from just 5% of kilometers traveled to 19% by 2040. And vehicles will go from about 2% electric now to a full 80% electric by 2040. Electrification of heat 
is a global opportunity to remove 126 billion tons of CO2 emissions annually. Shared electric transport and electrification of heat is not making old technology more efficient. This represents a massive new market led by new technology. So what does the energy transition mean? It is not just the elements of energy systems changing. It's the link between changing and growing generation, restructuring transmission and distribution. It goes beyond improving efficiency of traditional electrical users to creating entirely new markets. The real power of energy transition is in the sum of these parts. And to change one thing, we need to change everything.